This is a carrier package unit. Looking at the heat exchanger. In a little suspicious spot. And then there's this. That's a crack. This weld is all rusted out. There's a pit hole right there. And this one center tube here. See, it's... It's broken. You know what that means. Let's do six. The heat's been disabled six different ways, all of which are easy to pick up on if you're an HVAC tech, but hard enough that the owner of the equipment would have to actually try to re-enable his heat, meaning if they kill themselves with carbon monoxide, it isn't my fault. Now we're going to put this unit back together. Yep, that's a gas pack, all right. Remember it? Just remember it. it was five seconds ago. Oh man! Look at this little vent cap. It looks like it's from like 1901. I got us a pretty spider in it. Look at her. Look at the pretty girl. She built a web down here. See it? She's up there hiding, hanging out. Maybe I can go without destroying her web. Look at the way they got this little thing supported. Got this random bit of copper wire going to the gas line. Got this random bit of fence wire going over to that vent. We got this other bit that goes to the unit and to the buckle on the side of the disconnect. That is fully custom right there. I assume they did this because they didn't need to have sewer vents so close to the fresh air intake. That's the fresh air intake inside of the unit. Of course, if you, if you look at it as a crow flies, that spot is slightly further away from the fresh air vent than that spot. So good job on that. So I'm gonna change the heat exchanger on this unit today. I'm going to show something about it. I got Machine Gun Kelly with me. So, be an unusual format of the video. But if you're watching it, that means that I managed to record enough to bother with putting it on YouTube. So, enjoy the video. Homie's over there mowing the grass, but it sounds like he's mowing the driveway. You got rocks flying everywhere. To get the heat exchanger out, we go through the side. I'm going to take this little beam out of the way. That's heat exchanger, and that's a unit. We got a row of screws between those two lips that we gotta take out on the top and bottom. The bottom part's kind of inconvenient. But you see, it goes through. The very bottom ones have to come out. So we take loose all the wires that go to the heat stuff. I'm going to take out this one lone screw right here. And then this whole panel comes up. Now, suddenly, we can get to the burner rack. And if you look closely, you see some little keyhole screw holes there. Loosen those two screws and undo the gas line. And the whole burner assembly comes up. Get that screw. 
There's three screws in the one union that hopefully exists. It's actually easy enough that I can do it one-handed while I'm recording this. See? That's the whole burner assembly right there. With that out of the way, we no longer have a hard time getting all of them screws. Yeah, look at the rust. Holy shit. That's worse than I thought it was. Now I got nine screws to remove and the whole heat exchanger just kind of fall out. But with them out, this is all just kind of flopping around. The only other thing in the way is this nut that holds this little support thing in place. So, that out of there and slide the heat exchanger out to the side. That looks pretty bad, huh? You know, if someone had not taken the time to inspect that heat exchanger, they would have called it good. Thanks to this being a carrier who loves using fan proving instead of draft proving, it would have continued heating for years like this. It wouldn't have stopped until the holes in the heat exchanger got big enough to cause flame rollout issues. By then, you definitely got some carbon monoxide going in your place. Look at it, look. We found that crack there while we were doing the initial inspection. We didn't find these holes. Look at the size of these holes. See that? Look, I'm pushing it through. Oh, I'm, I'm damaging the heat exchanger. Armchair tacks are going to change the pad now. We all know what causes that. So anyway, while it's sitting here, conveniently, I can remove this inducer fan and this little cover panel, which might prove to be so rusty it needs to be replaced. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Oh yeah. There's our wheel. Okay. Nice and rusty. Uh, fan housing is still intact. Barely. Barely, but I'm an innocent bystander. It's not good, man. There's a hole in this plate. Need to make us a little piece of metal to patch that. This is the reason why we ought to make stainless steel parts for these gas heaters, you know? They're always like this when you get them apart. If the parts were made of stainless, this wouldn't happen. Even when you get a stainless steel heat exchanger, these parts are not stainless. This little restrictor plate here, that's all rusted to shit. That's not part of the new heat exchanger. Your order 
as a heat exchanger sometimes you end up in a situation where you find out when you're installing the heat exchanger that you needed more than just a heat exchanger. You can't very well just stop the show and go get the other parts. So you end up doing what we're fixing to do. That's pretty bad. Pretty bad, man. Here's the new heat exchanger. Kind of a goofy design, huh? I'm now cut out this piece of metal. Good as new. They just happened to send one of these fiberglass gaskets the exact shape and size of the piece of metal that I cut out. I didn't even know that gasket was there when I cut out that piece of metal. Well anyway, this piece of metal is supposed to go here to protect our little gasket from damage from flames. So this little gasket goes here. This goes here, and it gets screwed from the other side. But did it switch itself to heat because it was corroded batteries? Like, no, no it's, it had the tab buttons that you had to physically manually move. Just set this down in here like this. That's what I'm talking about right there. I'm going to set this little guy right here. And this lovely rusty old thing right here. And we can take this little casket and set it right here. Put our little induced draft orange machine right here. That is the technical term for this fan, it's an induced draft orange machine. Right there. We just screw everything down. Sure is cool. Looks like shit, don't it? Those little restrictor plates are there, I think, to you know, make more of a vacuum inside the heat exchanger so that, you know, pulls the flame in with more force. Fuck it. So now that we've done the initial burn off, we can remove the seal plate. Well, that prevented it from blowing as much of the smoke inside as it would have normally done. We can commence with putting it all back together.
that's how you change the heat exchanger on a carrier rooftop package unit.